I'm your host, Jess Carter, and on this episode of Data Driven Leadership, we're diving into modern data warehouses. Specifically, we're going to look at the issue of single sources of truth in your data, and ultimately, how do you get there? To help me solution on the spot is Will Gray, VP of Data Services at Resultant. Welcome to the show, Will. We're so glad you're here. It's good to be here, Jess. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And Will, for those who don't know you, can you just give us a quick insight about like why Will and why data warehouses? Like what's the, where, where do you kind of land in this space? How'd you get here? That's a, it's an interesting question. And I'm not actually sure how I landed here either. <laughs> I, I started off at, in store operations for both Walmart and Target and then somehow stumbled into analytics. Um, and my previous organization was going through a data warehouse project. And it was probably a, one of those that was on the Gartner statistics, but not on the positive side of it. Um, and so got to see a lot of what not to do. Um, and then I latched on to a few key technologies in my career and just went deep dive and just fell in love with the space and how you um, get the business to really adopt analytics and, and become data driven. Um, and that led into my career as a consultant and now. Um, so I have the pleasure of serving a team here as the VP of data services. So if I hear you right, your career really started in the business itself and you needed data and then you kind of fell into that data component for a new career move, right? Exactly. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, then you'll be the perfect person for our solution on the spot today. So are you, uh, are you good if we head into our solution on the spot segment? I would love that. Okay, here we go. We are getting, you and I are getting called into a, um, a potential client's office. It's a CIO. It's somebody that's been friends with you for a while. And they're, you know, they're a new CIO to an organization that's had a warehouse for a while. But as they get started into their new gig, they're realizing that leaders of different departments in the business are coming to them with data that's supposed to be op operational insights but it's conflicting. And the more they dig into the warehouse, they're realizing it has major issues that needs resolution. And they're trying to discern, do they tear it down and build from scratch? Do they try and fix it? How do they get to, you know, they weren't looking at a project or a strategic plan where they wanted to go build a data warehouse. They just wanted operational insights. So a little overwhelmed trying to figure out what to do. Where do you begin? Oftentimes we, we begin just with a conversation and it's a two or three hour workshop that, that exists on a whiteboard, like what I have behind me. Um, what, what we often see is there's tension between business and IT. And so everybody likes to point the finger at the other party of why do numbers not match? Why can't we get accurate reporting or why aren't we getting our forecast correct? Um, and what we end up seeing is in most organizations, there's not a source of truth or a single source of truth. It's sources of truth. Finance has its source of truth. Um, commission sales has its source of truth. IT is trying to replicate and reconcile both of those together. And oftentimes you see that in a, in a data warehouse project. And what we often see as well, and when we're assessing a current stand up is the data warehouse was built six years ago. Everybody felt really good about it about six year, years ago. <laughs> and then there was no maintenance done to it or the very minimum, right? We still walk in and we see 2008 R2 SQL Server 2012 more often. Um, and, and that's if they're on-prem. Otherwise, they're in AWS and early version, you know, in Redshift or, or something like that. Yeah. But nobody's really leveraging that in their, in their tech stack. And... Um, what I often find more than anything is as consultants, our job is to might be more of a marriage counselor and to try to break down and, and figure out how do we make this work, right? We signed up for this. How do we, how do we move, move you to something that's more modern? Um, and that truly solves the problem. We should probably back up for a moment here for, for, you know, the dynamic too of, I haven't even really said, you know, what is a data warehouse? We should probably just cover that too. Like when somebody says, hey, I've heard about these things, what are they? Can you give a quick elevator pitch of what is a data warehouse and when might you want or need one? My definition would probably not match what's in the, the textbooks, right? But a data warehouse is something that collects and, and centralizes your data and maps out according to how your business flows. And so it allows your data to flow like the red map out what how your revenue and how your business makes money. Um, and so it should be a reflection of that. And that's oftentimes where we see um, IT departments get in trouble as they build their data warehouses, mapping out their source systems. 
and they don't map out the ontology, right? The, mm. the overall working scheme of the business. For sure. Um, so that's kind of the, the pivot differentiator, I, I believe, that why we outperform and don't see the failure rates of the data warehouse project that um, many organizations do. Yeah. And I think like when I play through some of my experiences working on data warehouses too. So there's some behavioral issues that are really interesting too around data warehouses. So I've noticed, um, you know, leveraging the data as a weapon. So how do I make my team look like they're doing really, really good? And I can go build a report that says exactly what I want it to. And, uh, but it might be contrary to how somebody was using that same source system data to make their department look really, really good. And so to your, back to your point about a marriage counselor, right? There's this like, hey guys, it's not just about replicating the data that was in your source system. It's also about agreeing and aligning across the org on what metrics and data we're going to leverage to drive the business and making sure that we're, we're analyzing it appropriately as a signal for the business, not as a performance eval tool for your leader or manager, right? Uh, it, it's spot on. You know, I, I you, you made me think back to early in my career in analytics where I had somebody come in and say, no, I need you to come back with, with, different numbers you're you're not analyzing correct i'm like no it's <laughs> it's correct this is what sales are sorry it doesn't meet the story here's how i would pitch it um yeah we often see the, the conflict happen um specifically between finance and then kind of your sales or re revenue generation department um, specifically because one's trying to say no this is what's happening and this is our definition of of what you do in sales is like, no, this is what we generated. This is what we're going to pay commissions on. This is our definition. And oftentimes at the, the base layer, it's the same, but it's about what you include or don't include in the different filters. And so you say one number, but the, the exclusions on, um, on what might be included or not, it's, it's just a, a difference in definition. And, and that's really the risk in building a data warehouses. And when we're scoping, is how long does it take to, for us to figure out what is that real definition? And that's the what causes a project to either go long or finish up really quickly. Does the client come to you and really know immediately what they do want or does it elaborate? Because I think some of the other experience I've had is as we start to build momentum. So if we're working with this client, we discern that their, their hardware and software is out of date. Everything's out of date. We need to just sort of rebuild. As we get those filters layered in, we get the sources plugged in, they start to get this momentum of like, whoa, there's value here. Well, but then you got to you got to manage and govern it because then people want to build their own filters. And so, so there's this like organizational purview of how are we going to use this tool to drive meaningful decisions? And you can get to those performance metrics for, you know, your commissions and you can get to how is everybody behaving, but you also need to have those signals about how the business is performing, where the story tells itself, you don't try and fit the data to the story you're telling. Is that right? I feel like that's what I'm hearing you say. It's, it's layers, right? My, what I have is kind of my core layer. If you think about like transactions or how our monetary system works, I have a dollar. That's the base of it. I'm going to hand you a dollar. Now that happens, there's another layer that's credit cards. And so how does that transact or reconcile? And then on top of that, there's more layers. And so a data warehouse is going to be the same. I have my core foundation principle that maps out the, the business and that's in the data warehouse. And then I might have different analytical access points to the data that allow you to uh, tap in. And so if somebody wants to bring a Tableau or somebody wants to bring a Power BI, like, or whatever the next technology stacks are, um, data science um, or Spark to be able to, to drill in deeper into your, to your understanding of, of machine learning, um, you can do that. And it's how do you, what layer do you trust and which layer do you allow for more of that little bit of freedom? So there's room to play. There's like, there, there's, we're not saying you have to lock the thing down and only give keys out to three people. We're saying, let's agree on what we're going to leverage to make data-driven decisions for the organization. And then let's have some exploratory room to play where we can analyze the data and figure out if there's new insights that we can draw into how we manage the business. Amen. Data governance is supposed to be an enabler. It's supposed to be, hey, here's the rails that keeps us out of trouble. And here's how we're going to know that we're going to be okay. And here's the, the paths not to cross, but it's not supposed to be most people when they implement data governance, it's a scary thing. And we're going to shut down access because right. you, we don't really know what to expect. And so it's the fear of the unknown. Yeah. And when you have somebody who's running data governance programs who understand what are the things that are unknown to most, but are known by us, then it becomes an enabler. It becomes that slingshot for your organization. 
that yeah. says, how do we get data out into the organization that people can trust and do things with? So if we follow the story through, so, so this guy or gal we're working with says, hey, here's what I, they lay it out for us. We see the software they're using. We understand the analytics. They're trying to overlay on that data to make decisions. We see how complex or, or simple it is. Either way, you're going to start to understand it and propose changes they need to make, whether it's a new filter or a completely new solution. And maybe that's the question too is, um, you know, I think some people want to know, or maybe this client might ask, when will this ever be done? There's sort of this this vibe that I, that data warehouses get of like it's this continual improvement. And so if this is somebody who was never supposed to be in the business of a data warehouse this year, and now they're finding themselves in the middle of trying to scrape together a budget for a data warehouse solution, you know, how much does it cost? How long does it take? When are we done? Can you like how do you t- tackle any of that? <laughs> I, I usually answer head on. Great data warehouse is never going to be done, but it's going to be built in a way that is scalable and that you can know that there's always some iteration or improvement, but you have a workflow that that maps it in. Because a growing organization is going to be one that is always finding new data sets, is figuring out how to monetize their data, is figuring out how to interact with new vendors and, and how to think differently. And that happens on the edge. So that happens in your marketing department, that happens in your sales or revenue generation department, that happens through analytics and and, and vendor partnerships. You know, somebody's gonna think differently and say, oh, I could tap into that data source or I can do this. And then it's about asking the right questions. Well, why, right? And it's oftentimes you have to get to the five layers of why beneath. So much so that a lot of IT departments make the mistake of saying no, instead saying not now, let's get the plan together so we feel really good about it. The right people involved in the engagement matters. The right information and decisions learning those quickly matter. And then, I don't know, does it take a quarter? Like on average, if you're looking at an enterprise company, maybe like mid-level enterprise company, 500 people, you know, I don't even know if that's helpful to you when you discern the length of this, right? But like, how do you discern for this guy or gal, is this going to take 16 weeks, six weeks, six hours? It's usually after the first conversations where you're going to know what the, what the length is, because we've built large organizations, data warehouses in three months, and we've built them in 12 months. Um, but it's how easy it is to extract the business rules and how much digging do you have to get to do that? Um, how complicated are the source systems? And then what stack do they use? Most people are trying to modernize. And so they're, they're going from a, a Ford Pinto to a Ferrari. There's a lot of driving school that has to take, you know, take place between to get you there so you feel comfortable on the track with that. So I think the same with a a data warehouse and and something that's skipped over quite a bit is the change management process that goes along with it. And so making sure that the rest of the organization knows how to tap into it and really leverage the insight coming from it and they can trust it. Thanks for your time, Will. Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Jess Carter. And don't forget to subscribe to our data-driven leadership wherever you get your podcasts and rate and review us, letting us know how these conversations are shaping your business. We can't wait for you to join us on the next episode.